In the early hours of the 23rd of May 2020, Japanese women's wrestler and reality TV star Hana Kimura was found dead in a Tokyo apartment after a series of concerning posts that she posted to social media with her showing her gruesome self-harm images along with messages telling everybody that she's sorry and goodbye. It was later confirmed that Hana indeed herself. All of this happened as a result of a slew of never-ending online insults thrown at Hana in the last 53 days of her life. Fans were angry at her because of a Netflix reality TV show that she was in called Terrace House. Hana was struggling so publicly, but how come nothing significant was done to help her? What really happened that caused Hana Kimura to herself? Who really is at fault for her death? And what really happened in the final days of Hana Kimura? This video will be talking about very heavy topics, so viewer discretion is advised. But before we get into her final days, it's important to know who Hana was as a person. So if you want to skip straight to her final days, the timestamp to skip to is on the screen right now, and leave a like on the video while you're at it. But anyway, Hana Kimura was born in 1997 in Japan to a Japanese mother and an Indonesian father. When Hana was one years old, her mom and dad broke up and she was raised by her mom, Kyoko Kimura, who was also a Japanese woman's wrestler. While Hana was growing up, Kyoko hadn't necessarily made it in wrestling, so Hana did not have a lot of money growing up. On top of this, she did not have many friends and she was the constant victim of bullying because she was mixed race. Kids would also make fun of her because she grew up in a single mother household and because her mom was a wrestler. So naturally, Hana had low self-esteem growing up, but this turned into one of her staple strengths. Because according to her friends and family, she always had a desire to uplift other people because she knew how it felt to be an outcast. She was always kind, helpful, caring, and compassionate. Hana was truly a beautiful yet delicate soul. She just wanted to be loved, so she always gave out love. That's why it's so fitting that her name is Hana, because it translates to flower in Japanese. She was beautiful as a flower, inside and out. Initially, she bounced around professions that she wanted to dabble in, as she wanted to be a dancer, an idol, a model, and an actress. But then at the age of 18, she decided to become a professional wrestler and was trained by her mother. From her debut in wrestling, you could tell that she had that thing that can't really be taught. While still rough around the edges, she just had it. Not long after her pro wrestling debut, she debuted in the biggest women's wrestling promotion in Japan called Stardom. And that's where Hana really made her name and made herself into a star. As the leader of her own faction, Tokyo Cyber Squad, Hana Kimura was the very definition of star presence. Before you even saw her wrestle, you already knew she was bound for the stars. She had the effortless badassery a head-turning colorful look, infectious energy, natural but oozing charisma, and not to mention, she was breathtakingly gorgeous. But her good looks didn't fool you because she was extremely intense and crisp in the ring and was always looking for a fight. She achieved a lot in stardom in such a short time as she won the tag team titles, the trios titles, wrestled at Madison Square Garden, wrestled in the first ever women's Wrestle Kingdom match in New Japan Pro Wrestling history in front of 40,000 fans in the Tokyo Dome Arena. She won the 5 star Grand Prix in 2019 which is stardom's biggest annual tournament and she was involved in stardom's most famous feud to date with Julia that has almost 6 million views and counting in total in all of the videos released on YouTube. She almost also won the top bout of stardom. She was groomed to be the face of the company and she could have gone down as a legend in stardom. She could have also been a good fit in either WWE or AEW. Hana had a deep-seated love for professional wrestling because as long as she could remember, pro wrestling had always been a part of her life and she wanted to spread the love for pro wrestling and that's what brought her to a Netflix reality TV show that she had been watching since she was a teen called Terrace House, which is a Japanese slice of lifestyle reality show which was a fresh take on reality TV in which six men and six women lived together but were still allowed to leave the house. Hana got a role in this TV show but little did she know that this was the beginning of the end. Hana's last days on planet Earth started on the 22nd of January 2020, when the infamous costume scene episode was filmed. On this day, Hana's old love interest, who she had been distancing herself from, Kai Kobayashi, didn't notice that Hana's pro wrestling gear was in the washing machine that he used, so he washed the gear unknowingly with his laundry and he dried it. This had caused Hana's wrestling gear to shrink and it was no longer wearable, so Hana was understandably upset considering that her gear was approximately $1,000 to make and it was the same gear that she had worn two weeks prior in the Tokyo Dome in front of 40,000 people. While Terrace House claims to have no script at all, they did actually stage certain events and the producers of the show, Fuji TV, often instigated situations in order to create more drama on the show. 
and according to the police investigations on the reports, when the producers saw that Hana was upset about her gear being shrunken, they stopped filming and they told her to slap Kai when he returns home, to which Hana refused. But even though she refused, she was still feeling a lot of pressure from the Fuji TV executives to do something to Kai because all the Terrace House members signed this horrible strict contract in which if they do not follow the instructions of the producers, they are liable for a fine from $10,000 to $100,000. It's crazy that they only paid each member of the cast about $1,000 per month to be on the show. The producers of the show were generally heavy instigators because on another episode of the show, they told Kai Kobayashi to grow upon his breast without her consent, but Kai ultimately refused this. Hana though was in a tough position because from day one in Terrace House, the producers had always told her to act more like a pro wrestler and to turn her bad guy persona on from a 1 to a 10. And so being very emotional and under immense pressure from the producers of the show, when Kai returned home and when the cameras began filming again, she insulted Kai very harshly and knocked his cap off his head and angrily walked off. And according to reports, after this infamous incident, the producer yelled out, that was great, even though Hana was distraught. Two housemates then tried to talk to Hana about the incident, but she broke down in front of them and then stormed away in tears and as she walked away, she muttered the words, I feel like b and this is her sobbing. <laughs> As she exited the room, Hana started hyperventilating and she fell down the stairs. The producer stopped filming at this point and helped the struggling Hana. She then laid down on the couch and wrapped herself in a blanket and staff started filming again while Hana was staring blankly into the ceiling. Hana texted one of her friends saying, it really hurts. I felt like I was dying when I fell down to the floor a while ago, but the camera kept chasing me around. She also highlighted to a friend the stage nature of the show by saying, I was really irritated by Mr. Producer before we filmed. I feel like the staff has bad intentions. My work uniform was destroyed and the staff told me to lose my temper in front of the camera. Even though it hasn't been aired yet, why do I even have to say this? The staff fueled the fire before the shooting. Over the next few days, she also expressed to her friends how she thinks this incident may affect her reputation. The official episode hadn't been released yet by February, but the trailer had been released and there was a little bit of backlash that Hannah saw. There were little rumblings of hate that Hana took note of and on February 16, she texted her friend at 3.50 a.m. saying, I was supposed to be in bed by 12, but it hurts so much. Hana was struggling with what happened on that fateful evening and of course she didn't want the episode to air but ultimately she was not in control. This incident was affecting Hana's life heavily at this point. She still continued her life but the worst was set to come. On March 28, 2020, Terrace House then stopped all filming due to the pandemic and Japan was in a lockdown. And on March 31, 2020, the infamous episode about the costume incident dropped. This episode did not feature Hana's emotional meltdown after the costume incident. This episode aired to Netflix's 200 million users across 190 countries all over the world and there was instant heavy backlash against Hana Kimura from all over the world but the majority of the hate was coming from Japan and the comments were insanely harsh to Hana with fans saying get out of Terrace House, you make me feel like puking, leave you ugly b just disappear, go d Hana. Some people were also being racist to Hana because of the fact that she wasn't fully Japanese. Not only were the nasty messages sent to Hana extremely, extremely inappropriate and uncalled for, but there was also a high volume of tweets that were directed at Hana just in general. She was a very sensitive person, so this onslaught of hate proved to be too much for her. So on the evening of the 31st of March, she s***ed her left and she sent the gruesome photos to her friends and she posted a picture on her social media which was very, very concerning. Her friends bombarded her with texts asking if she's okay and Hana seemed to have calmed down and clarified the situation and apologized but her mom called her and her mom said that she explained herself to her by saying, I'm sorry for all the flames but it's okay because my blood has stopped flowing. The next day on April 1st, Hana's mom went to see her and she took Hana to the hospital where they gave her 8 stitches on her left arm. Hana's stablemates and best friends in wrestling, Konami and Jungle Kiona, took care of Hana at Hana's house at this moment in time. They were very close to Hana and stayed by her side because she was very low. But Hana was still continuing to harm herself. On this day, Hana even reached out to the producers of Terrace House, Fuji TV, by saying, I want to I remembered it burning. Isn't it terrible to die? Fuji TV took this seriously and they texted Hana back and forth, trying to help her through her difficult time. Fuji TV were most in contact with Hana during this time. And on April 4th, the Fuji TV producers suggested that Hana go and live with Jungle Kiona, and so Hana did this. 
On April 7, an online group chat was created between Hana, Jungle Kiona, and three other members of the Fuji TV producers for the sole purpose of helping Hana. On April 8, three producers from Fuji TV went to see Hana in person at Jungle Kiona's house to make sure that she's alright, but Hana was sadly still struggling. On April 9, Fuji TV finally referred Hana to a psychiatrist, but since it was the very height of the pandemic, Hana was not able to see the psychiatrist, and instead a doctor just advised her to run or walk outside and to keep a regular routine until her urge to self-harm went away. Eventually, while Hana was at her friend Jungle Kiona's house, she had calmed down and stopped self-harming by some time in mid-April, but she was incredibly, incredibly depressed. Jungle Kiona even mentioned that Hana was showing symptoms of depression as she would sleep for days at a time, only get up to clean the house excessively, then go back to sleeping for a couple of days. She was in a deep depressive episode and at this point the online hate was never ending. So on April 19, 2020, the staff suggested to Hana to delete her social media so that she could avoid all of the hate. But Hana sadly couldn't really do that because she was a brand. She was a professional wrestler and she had to constantly promote herself. But at this point it seemed that Hana was getting better, at least on the surface, because in interviews with Hana's mother and her friends, it was revealed that Hana was the type of person who deeply cared about others so she forced herself to appear positive and energetic to avoid causing them any worries or burdens. And so in this perceived upliftment of her mood, Hana returned to her apartment around the end of April in quote unquote better spirits. But in reality, the hate that she was receiving online really weighed down on her. And on May 9, 2020, 14 days before her death, she texted her friend, No matter what I do, I just get bashed on. That's just Terrace House. But things were sadly only about to get worse, as on May 14th, just 9 days before Hana's passing, Fuji TV producers visited Hana and they agreed to let her free from her contract. But she just had to do a graduation episode in which her and Kai made up. The producers were firmly in control of the situation and the right thing for them to do in this situation was to have just let Hana go but the producers saw how much buzz Hana was generating so they decided to take advantage of this. The producers were sheep in wolf's clothing that were sent to placate Hana for the storm that was about to come because on the very very same day that they visited Hana, the meltdown that she experienced after the costume incident was posted onto YouTube and this video gained about 560,000 views in total. This video also didn't paint her in the best light because it made her out to be a sort of villain. Fuji TV were basically running with the narrative that Hana was not a good person. Fuji TV basically put profit over a person. Even though they were helping her, they didn't really care about Hana's well-being because if they did, considering all that they knew about the situation and Hana and how fragile she was at that moment, they wouldn't have aired it. Fuji TV just had to get their views. And the worst thing about all of this is that but despite seeing her that very same day, the producers of Fuji TV didn't even let Hana know it was going to drop and they didn't even consult with her if it was the best decision to drop the episode. Hana basically found out by surprise that the video was up and she found out the hard way as a new wave of unfiltered hate was directed towards her out of the blue and had now become a trend to hate on Hana Kimura. After it aired, Hana then forwarded malicious DMs sent to her by an anonymous person to the producers of Terrace House, where the person said, hey hey, when are you gonna The hate was getting more and more intense and Hana was already so fragile and was slipping further and further. And on 15 May 2020, just eight days before her passing, she called Kai Kobayashi and she apologized profusely for the incident and she told him that pulling his hat off wasn't really her intention but rather it was instigated by the staff and Kai even told her that he had a feeling that the staff had instructed Hana to overreact. On the same day on 15 May 2020, eight days before her death, and after the YouTube clips of her meltdown were released, Hana and her mom held a dinner party for her grandmother and from this picture she looked like she was in good spirits but she was not coping at this moment. After this dinner party, her mom Kyoko gave her a ride back home but as Hana was in the passenger seat, she burst out in tears and her mom stepped out the car and Hana proceeded to tell her mom absolutely everything. Her mom knew that she had been struggling with the amount of hate that she'd been getting, but she didn't know the extent to which she had been struggling. Hana laid her heart bare to her mother and her mom did the only thing a mother can do in that situation and she comforted her daughter and assured her it was all going to be alright. But sadly, that wasn't enough. As in the next few days before her passing, Hana went to the beach and she posted some very alarming things to her Instagram. She said, 
Today my grandma called me and said you are the cutest person ever because you're the person I love the most. I'm sorry that I'm the person who my grandma said she loved the most, that I'm the human who someone believed should disappear. I'm sorry for being alive. I'm sorry for not being a good person. I'm sorry for making you feel uncomfortable. If I disappear, will you forgive me? How should I disappear? If I disappear, will everyone love me? I like everyone. When she got home, she replied to a hate message that said, So f***ing gross. Please disappear as soon as possible. In response to that, she said, Hey, I get it. Man, I really want to disappear. She further said, That's true, huh? I'm sorry that my face and my inner being is ugly. If I can disappear, I want to disappear quickly. Hana was struggling in plain sight and she left many clues that she was at the brink but she was about to get pushed over the edge as on May 18th, just 5 days before she passed away, Fuji TV aired the costume incident episode on national TV without consulting Hana beforehand and naturally the hate targeted towards Hana grew to even bigger proportions. This episode was broadcast to millions of homes on national TV in Japan so by now Hana was a villain in many many people's eyes and the hate was getting to new unprecedented heights. Hana then sent text to her friends and the production staff of Terrace House saying, I can't stop looking at my DMs one by one. It hurts so much, lol. I want to I want to disappear. I'm sorry that I'm alive. I want to my guts and apologize. Hana was extremely unstable at this point. And then on May 19th, four days before her passing, Hana's mom was trying to be there for her daughter, so she arranged a meetup with Hana, but Hana was late for this meetup. Little did she know that this would be the last time she ever saw her daughter. At a later date, Kyoko said this about their final meeting. Since Hana was running late when she met up with me, I suddenly got angry and said, You're late. When I think about it, I feel uneasy. Why did I get so mad at her? But I never knew it would be my last farewell. Hana proceeded to spend some time with her mom and on this day she went and adopted a cat. She picked up a munchkin cat. And the key characteristics for these sorts of cats is that they have short legs but the cat that Hana picked up was struggling to get adopted because it was a long legged munchkin cat. Japan is notorious for their persecution of unwanted cats so Hana picked up that cat because it was going to get killed if it wasn't adopted soon and Hana's mom revealed Hana's words after the adoption of the cat. Hana said, we live in a world where you'd be killed if you weren't perfect. This quote rings so painfully and truthfully considering it literally applies to Hana and encapsulates her whole situation. This cat was named Karage Kun and it translates to fried chicken in English. Hana chose this name because the cat resembled a fried chicken ball. How cute! But despite this, at this point, she had officially mentally checked out and her mind was past the point of no return. The obnoxious trolls and her demons had won. The hate was just too much for her and she decided that she doesn't want to be in this world anymore. She decided that she was going to erase herself and fulfill so many people's wishes for her to just disappear and so she went on about that. Sometime in the next few days, she proceeded to buy the concoctions for the toxic gas and on the 22nd of May, her last full 24 hours on earth, she had texted a friend throughout the day who had also been on Terrace House, Emika Mizukoshi, but her friend admitted that something felt a little bit off about Hana that day and then Hana suddenly stopped replying. And during the evening on May 22 or in the early hours of May 23, she put a little cat Karagekun in a box traveled to the stardom resting dojo and put him outside the dojo and returned home. And around 3am on May 23, 2020, Hana then posted a series of pictures with goodbye messages on Instagram and Twitter, but perhaps her most telling one was on Twitter in which she shared a picture of her up bloody with the caption, I get nearly 100 blunt remarks every day. I can't deny feeling hurt. Go d You're disgusting. Just disappear. I've always been thinking that about myself the most. Thanks for giving birth to me, mom. I wanted to be loved in my life. Thank you to everyone who supported me and stayed by my side. I love you. I'm sorry for being weak. And at 3.16 a.m. on May 23, she then texted her mom for the last time and she said, I'm sorry, mama. I can't take it anymore. It got too painful. Mama, live happily, okay? Once Hana's mom saw this message, she tried to call her but she had already turned off her phone and so her mom proceeded to call an ambulance and she called a taxi to her place. After Hana had turned off her phone, 
She proceeded to take her last breaths with toxic gas and she collapsed onto her bed, her final resting place. By the time the ambulance and her mom had arrived, it was already too late and they found a note on the front door that said, poisonous gas is forming. Even in her last moments, Hana was truly considerate of others. They found several notes beside her and they took her to the hospital, but by 4 a.m. on May 23rd of 2020, Hana Kimura was pronounced dead at the age of 22. And that is how the final days of Hana Kimura played out. After Hana Nakamura passed away, the producers of Terrace House, Fuji TV, cancelled the show and in the investigation they denied, denied, denied all the negligence in the case of Hana. Even though they quite obviously were negligent and prioritised the popularity of the show over Hana Kimura's well-being, Fuji TV did not want to accept liability for their wrongdoings and lied about everything to save their own asses, which is honestly quite sad. The police also investigated this case to get to the source of all the hate, but it was quite hard because after Hana died, a lot of people People just deleted their hate messages towards her, but the police did arrest a man for severely abusing Hana Kimura. But surprise, surprise, he was hit with an $80 fine, which is quite honestly ridiculous. However, the second man arrested was told by the court to pay Hana Kimura's mom $9,800 for abusing Hana Kimura, and the court also ordered a third man to pay $12,000 to Hana Kimura's mom. Lots of respect to Kyoko Okamura because she has been fighting for justice for Hana. Because sadly, due to circumstances out of her control, there hasn't been that much justice for Hana. But in December of 2022, Hana's mom sued Fuji TV and two other companies for approximately $1 million. And hopefully, she will get that money. But sadly, no amount of money can ever replace the hole that is left in our heart from Hana's passing. Hana's death was very crushing for fans all over the world. A beautiful soul was ultimately lost in the toxic culture that we as humans have cultivated on the internet where we say things to people that we wouldn't say to their faces in real life. But there's no use in getting angry over it. We can use this as a lesson to be better as people moving forward. During Hana's time in wrestling, her catchphrase as she always said was everyone is different, everyone is special. And this is the message that Hana most wanted to get out. It was the message that resonated deeply within her. We may all be different, but we are all special. It's a message of self-love and loving others as they are. Nobody is perfect and neither was Hana. But if we can accept our differences and treat each other with a little more kindness, the world will be a much better place, online and offline. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other videos. And a very big thank you to Farah Akase for the multiple Twitter threads that were used in the scripting of this video. I'll leave the link in the description to her Twitter handle and all of the threads that she translated from official police reports and articles and interviews. But anyway, thank you again and goodbye.